Chesapeake, Virginia, 1650 AM WHKT presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick and at GJBTV.com. Now here is Greg Bickavaris. And thank you very much, Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us right here on News Talk 1650. Also, TuneIn.com. This is Sports Scene right here every Wednesday, 12 to 1. Also, Sports Highlights, my interview show in Newport News on NNPSTV.com. Tell your friends about 1650. Twitter, at Greg Bick, at Sports Highlight, at GJBTV, and HR One Line Mall Com, as well as WHKT AM 1650. Thank you to our military. Great guest lineup as well. Sponsors on GJBTV.com homepage and marketplace sponsors. Guest lineup presented by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant with two great locations in Virginia Beach as well. Phone line presented by Mi Hogar. Sponsors in December, Spaghetti Yeti's, Crawl Space, Mi Hogar. Also, as we mentioned to you before, the Wizards will be on this station for at least 10 games starting in January. We'll be uh, putting that in the Daily Press TV radio log as well. You've heard the promos already. Redskins have a big game against the Eagles this week on the road. Cowboys continue to be very hot. We've got a special show next week before sports scene from 11 a.m. to noon. The bowl scene, college football bowl scene. We'll talk about all the bowls. you got two excellent Virginia schools in the bowls this year, Old Dominion and Virginia Tech as well. College basketball going on, NBA going on as well. December gets drowned by the NFL in the bowls, so really people start paying attention to basketball after the first of the year. Hence, that's why we are carrying the Wizards starting in January. Great interviews, business segments, highlights, commentary, what teased me off. Thank you for making the habit Huh, Joe Daniel, to listen to Sports Scene Weekly, and we love our regulars and newcomers as well right here on Sports Scene. Also, archived at gjbtv.com, hit the YouTube link. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. Oh, yeah, this is the place where Washington Wizards basketball comes alive on the radio. John Wall, edge of the circle, cuts to his right, splits the defenders, drives, 360 under the basket, oh, oh, oh. makes it, scores! Follow John Wall, the Wizards, all season long on their journey through the NBA. Catch and shoot for three, it's there! It's there! Check it on Twitter at Dave J Sports or at GC Talks. It is the hashtag radio party right here on your home for Washington Wizards basketball. Listen on 1650 AM, The Answer. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mi Hogar, there is something for everyone. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premier interview show with Greg Bicavaris each Wednesday from 12 to 1 on AM 1650 and TuneIn.com. It was a very proactive role for one gentleman, but the Board of Visitors and, and Woodsea League and the President kind of let him know that there is a pecking order involved. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Wednesdays at noon on AM 1650, The Answer. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here on News Talk 1650, your 10,000 watt voice of Hampton Roads. And now everybody's listening today on tunein.com by typing in WHKT to listen on your phone or your computer. This next segment is brought to you by Tokyo Grill and Buffet in Hampton at 49 West Mercury Boulevard. Great place for lunch and dinner, holiday parties. They got all types of good food, Asian food, American food. 
fruits, desserts, hibachi, all-you-can-eat buffet at Tokyo Grill and Buffet. Go by and see Bing and the friendly staff right there at the Langley Square Shopping Center at um, in Hampton at 49 West Mercury Boulevard. All right, let's welcome our first guest today, Mr. Adam Green out in the West Coast in Arizona. He covers the Cardinals and the NFL. Adam, welcome to Virginia. Well, thank you for having me. Very good, very good. First of all, go ahead and give us your Twitter handles. That's how everybody uh, interacts today. Uh, Twitter, you can find me at the Adam Green. Very good. All right, Adam, tell us a little quick bio blast. Uh, you've been covering the Cardinals, and tell us about your background. Uh, background is, I mean, covering the Cardinals. I grew up in the Valley, actually, went to school at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Been working at Arizona Sports 98.7 FM and .com for about eight years or so, covering the Cardinals the last three or four, and yeah, just do everything they need over here. Small world. I got a cousin who lives in Tucson. Great place as well. And of course, I've stayed at uh, some of the great hotels out there as well. All right, let's talk about the Cardinals from the NFC West. You got Seattle on top at eight, three and one. Arizona second place at five, six and one. The Rams four and eight. L.A. Rams, that is. And the 49ers, dismal 1-11. and 11. Of course, Arizona made the postseason last year under Bruce Arians. Uh, they've looked really solid against the Redskins, of course. We'll talk about that as well. But what's been the issue with the Cardinals this year? they got so much talent. Uh, that's a good question. If whoever has the answer, I think, can make a lot of money for this team. You know, I think going into this season, most people thought the Cardinals would be at worst as good as they were last season and at best a little better. You know, they brought back everybody who did anything offensively they added Chandler Jones to help their pass rush which was a weakness going into the year and you figured if anything was going to derail them it would probably be a key injury to someone like Carson Palmer and he missed one game with a concussion but otherwise really just this team hasn't had well I guess the deep ball has not been there and that was a big part of their offense last season John Brown's been dealing with a sickle cell trait that's kept him off the field and inconsistent Michael Floyd has struggled to catch the passes not only the 50-50 balls that he came down with quite a few of last season, but just passes it hit him right in the hands, right in the chest. So different things, just whatever it is that the Cardinals had last season that's kind of separated them from the good teams where they won all the close games. They just haven't had it this season. They haven't made the plays. I mean, the end of the Washington game, that 42-yard pass to J.J. Nelson, they kind of put the game away. The Cardinals just haven't had that kind of play this season, and it was essentially their signature all of last season. Absolutely. Talking right here to Adam Green, who covers the Cardinals. The Redskins just played them, of course, and both these teams are fighting for a wild card spot as well. But when you talk about Adam Palmer, Johnson, Fitzgerald, Buchanan, Cooper, these are five elite players. I'm wondering, though, going forward, um, how much gas has Palmer got left? Of course, he's played majority of his career at the Bengals, and he also played for the Raiders. How much does he have left? He always seems like he's one hit away from breaking down. Yeah, it sure seems that way. He's 36 years old now. He'll be 37 later this month. And if you talk to Carson, he'll say how he's enjoying the game. He loves the preparation. He loves the practice. He loves getting ready for games and playing on Sunday so that he doesn't have this sense, at least what he's told us, that he's about ready to hang him up. But you got to figure he's been sacked 34 times this season, hit countless others, and at his age, you kind of do wonder how much does he want to play any, you know, after this season. As far as how much he has left in the tank, his numbers aren't what they were last season, but from watching him this year, when he's had time to throw, he's generally made very good throws, accurate throws, good decisions. So it's tough to say he's run out of gas or that the uh, drop in numbers from last season to this season is because he is losing. I mean, of course, as you get older, you're not going to be quite as good as you were the year before, but it's more to me the circumstances around him have caused him to struggle some. So as far as how much he has left in the tank, I'd say he probably has enough left in the tank to continue being a pretty good quarterback. But the question is, and as you said, he's one hit away. You always feel like he is. The question is, how much does he want to keep subjecting himself to the pounding of being an NFL quarterback? at his advancing age. Yeah, but the Cardinals beat the Redskins 31-23. to Redskins have lost two in a row, and they lost on Thanksgiving to the Cowboys, talking to Adam Green about the NFL and, of course, the wild card, the playoffs, and so forth. And Fitzgerald, I mean, he's been rejuvenated with Palmer, but um, he seems a lot happier now. A few years ago, when there was no decent quarterback there, he was very unhappy. His dad and him always seemed to have a lot of conversations as well about the future of Fitzgerald. How is he looking forward to next year? And Kind of like Steve Smith with the Ravens, it's almost like it's a year-to-year thing. Yeah, well, Larry, his, what he's done this season, really what he's done the last couple of seasons, has been nothing short of amazing. And he, like Carson Palmer, is signed for next season. They signed extensions during training camp this year. But, of course, everyone knew at the time that doesn't mean either one was coming back. But the way Larry Fitzgerald is playing now, he clearly still has plenty left in the tank as well. Just 
his role is different than what it was when he first began in his career where he was the outside receiver going deep. Now he's out of the slot doing a lot of the heavy lifting, so to speak, a lot of blocking too. And as far as, I guess, the perspective for him, I mean, he's 33 years old, and I think he seems more likely to at some point hang him up. He hasn't given any indication that he's done, but at the same time, when you're playing at a high level like he is, it's probably tough to walk away. But, of course, the team's lack of success this season has not helped the cause. If these guys want to come back, probably the reason they were so excited this season coming in was because they thought they had a chance at a Super Bowl, and technically they still do, I guess. But to see what Larry Fitzgerald's been doing this season at his age when, yeah, just a few years ago people thought that maybe he was on the decline, which it's like apparently, no, he was, he was still good. It was just a lack of quarterback play, lack of guys getting him the ball. So what Larry's been doing has been nothing short of phenomenal for the Cardinals, just a steady force that he's been really since they drafted him in 2004. Talking to Adam Green about the NFL and the Cardinals right here on Sports Scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1 on 1650 AM. Tune in dot com. Type in WHKT to listen on your phone or your computer. Follow the show on Tune In as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link, all presented by Tokyo Grill and Buffet. And Sports Scene 400 is going on right now at Long's Billiards. You can get $400 off the purchase of a pool table at the cash register. An additional $400 off. It's a really good deal for the holiday season at longsbilliards.com. $400 off the purchase of a billiards table. The the Bidwells, the younger Bidwell, of course, pretty much full control. And what's the uh, status of the older Bidwell? Uh, he really, I mean, we see him around the facility every now and then, Bill Bidwell. We see him there. I mean, for big events, he kind of walks around. But as far as his role in the organization at this point, He's more of a figurehead than anything else. People know Mr. B when he's around, but Michael, his son, is definitely the one who's in charge of the organization. Anytime anything happens, he's the one at the podium. He's the one talking. He's the one who's in control of what's going on. So the Bidwell family, it's kind of funny where, you know, especially if people who follow the Redskins know from back in the NFC East days when they were rivals with the Cardinals where the Bidwells weren't exactly held in high regard out here in Arizona and for good reason, but That has definitely changed under Michael. It's amazing what spending a little money and winning will do for you. But people, for as much ill will as there was towards Bill Bidwell back in the day, I think that's kind of cool for people. And people at least think, okay, that's fine. They kind of understood that part of the reason they didn't spend money was they didn't have the stadium because the second they got that, they started spending money. But in terms of his involvement in the franchise, he's more of a figurehead. It's Michael who's really in charge and doing all the work. Right. Of course, the same team, same ownership, same logo, just different city. Kind of reminds me of the Colts when they moved from Baltimore to Indianapolis. That's the same ownership, the Ursays, and they still sometimes honor the old Baltimore Colts. I've interviewed Jim Hart before, who, of course, played for the St. Louis Cardinals, and it's almost like, Adam, what's old is new again. The Rams are back in L.A. The St. Louis Rams don't have a team right now. Of course, their team, their former team in St. Louis is now part of the Arizona Cardinals, that ownership group. Been there since the late 80s. So so, you know, it's 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 different. But I was going to ask you, do the Bidwell, since they own the Cardinals as well in St. Louis, do they ever honor any of the former St. Louis Cardinals greats? Are they around at all? Uh, not really. I mean, you have the occasional one. I mean, Larry Wilson's around. He's in their ring of honor. I mean, Roy Green was entered in the ring of honor this season, too. So, I mean, they're around people who are part of the organization. But for the most part, I mean, the Cardinals now have been in Arizona for nearly 30 years that they are the Arizona Cardinals, the St. Louis ties, especially I think since the Rams were in St. Louis up until this season. It was kind of one of those, well, who gets you the Cardinals franchise, but you're in St. Louis, so they didn't know where to go. But there are some guys who are around the facility for big events or different things. But for the most part, I think at this point, the Cardinals have been in Arizona long enough where most of the people you'll see around the facility are either Phoenix Cardinals or Arizona Cardinals. To me, the two biggest surprises this year in football have been the Cowboys and the Raiders. And, of course, um, you're out in the West Coast as well. Do you think both will sustain? And what has been your biggest uh, surprise in this football season? Uh, those two teams, I mean, <laughs> the Cowboys, I think it's kind of funny just because of the fact that it's amazing what happens when they have a healthy quarterback. You know, the offensive line was there. They had a running back in Ezekiel Elliott. It was just great. But the offensive line makes it all go, and now they have a pretty good quarterback in Dak Prescott. When they show the Raiders were just building to this, but you know, as far as those are two of the most surprising teams as well as they're playing, but I don't even know looking at it, if it's that surprising just because of what they were building. But you look around the NFL, and I guess that's the depressing thing for people out here for in Arizona, and even the NFC West, where Seattle is going to be good again. I mean, they're leading the division; they're probably one of the favorites in the NFC. But just the fact that you have a team like the Cardinals, who was 
had high expectations is falling well short. And then you watch other teams like they didn't have the expectations and they're doing great. It's really frustrating for people because they wonder what happened. But you know, a young team like Oakland especially, they're just fun to watch right now because they seem to have a team that they're good now and there's no reason to think they won't continue to be good and not even just get better going forward. Special hello to all the veterans listening today as well. Uh, Pearl Harbor Day. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world listening to today's broadcast of sports scene in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea on TuneIn.com by typing in WHKT to listen on your phone or your computer. Thanks for all that you do. We're hoping you're enjoying today's version of sports scene. And as you know, Adam, in this Twitter world we live in, that seems like it's the number one social media is, is uh, Twitter. But TuneIn.com makes every show, including your show, my show, all the different shows, national, international. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that question. As far as TuneIn.com is really changing the way of radio. Oh, yeah, radio itself. I mean, really just the Internet, the way it's gone. Like, we have, I do a show Saturday mornings, and I have friends who listen to it, but on our podcast stream even. So mm-hmm. there's just so many different ways where someone wants to listen to a radio show. You don't have to be near a radio, and that makes it so much more fun, so much easier to get your content, and so much easier to get your stuff out to the masses or people who aren't in your market or however they are. If they want to listen to you, they can. So things like TuneIn and different things, podcasting, iTunes, and everything that people use. It's a pretty good invention for, I think, people like us. Oh, yeah, and of course, this show is archived on YouTube, and of course, you can fast-forward right to any segment you want. Of course, we tweet it and also can put it on Facebook. Um, Let's talk about uh, the remaining uh, schedule here. If the uh, Cardinals are going to do it, Adam, they're going to have to do it on the road. They do take on Miami, who who looked horrible against the Ravens. they got New Orleans, who's always up and down, it seems like, never no defense. They've got a tough Seattle team. you got to wonder how much they're going to be into it by then. And, of course, they finish the season against the Rams. And uh, what are your thoughts about the remaining four games? It's December football. you got to love it. Yeah, well, as you said, you kind of laid out the reasons where if you want to believe the Cardinals can make a run and finish this season, with five straight wins, including the next four, you could find reasons because the Dolphins maybe aren't as good as their winning streak suggested because the Saints will be at home in Glendale and they're not a great team. You mentioned Seattle may not be into that Week 16 game in the Rams in Week 17. You kind of feel like if the Cardinals are uh, went over the Rams away from making the playoffs, they'll come to play and win that game on the road. So you could definitely, if you want to believe that they have it in them to make that run, you can find reasons to say, oh, yeah, well, it could happen, but... What the Cardinals did with themselves, and they'll tell you about it too, is that the start they get off to, they put themselves in a position now where they can't lose another football game and conceivably make the playoffs. And when you have three of your last four on the road against maybe not bad teams, if you want to say the Rams are bad, but even they're close to 500, where it's a tall order, it's a tough task to ask a team to win those kinds of games, especially when they've been as inconsistent as the Cardinals. And as great as their win over the Redskins was, it's a good win against a pretty good team at home. It doesn't mean that they're all of a sudden back to being what they were last season. They've dealt with some injuries and inconsistency, and it seems like a lot of times this season it's been one step forward, two steps back for them. So if they go on the road to Miami and win this week, get back to 506-6-1, then they'll put themselves in position to maybe start believing that, yeah, this could happen. But right now, yes, it's conceivable that they could run the table and make the playoffs with the schedule they have remaining. But it doesn't seem likely just based on the fact that it's tough to win five games in a row, especially the next four when three of them are on the road. Yeah, and of course, the Dolphins clear across the country, but uh, they're playing in a warm weather place, and the Dolphins right now are bruised mentally. They are really on a roll. And the wild card is always exciting. I think I wish college football would do the same thing. I know we got spoiled, you know, with four teams. At least we got four. I'd like to at least see eight. The NFL's got it perfect six and six. You know, a couple teams get buys as well. But, um, you know, it's got a long way to go as far as college football. But keeping in pace here with the uh, the Cardinals, they made the postseason 8, 9, 14, and 15. I think they've got a gem in Bruce Arians. It's just a matter of taking them to the next level, not being satisfied with a 500 or a winning record or just getting to the postseason, kind of like the Bengals have been for so many years. Yeah, well, anyone who watched the All or Nothing TV show on Amazon that came out during training camp before this season, you might remember Bruce Arians' iconic thing with his team. He's like, we're talking about Super Bowl ring. Like, we're not talking Super Bowl. We're talking Super Bowl ring. So it wasn't even good enough just to make a Super Bowl. They wanted to win one. And they were on the doorstep last season. They got smoked by Carolina in the NFC Championship game. But you really felt that they've been building and building and building. And the next step this season would be taking that next step towards making the Super Bowl and maybe winning it. So that they've fallen where they're at. They still believe that they are a Super Bowl caliber team. But their record, of course, doesn't indicate that. But in terms of Bruce Arians, he's 
Well, a down season, he's had his own issues health-wise. He seems to be very much into it and trying to get this team back on track and make this late run because he is a very good coach, one of the better coaches in the NFL. But he, like his quarterback, Carson Palmer, and like this franchise, really, I mean, the Cardinals franchise has been to a Super Bowl, but it's almost like until they prove they can do it, you know, until Carson Palmer proves he can play well in a playoff game, until Bruce Arians can take a team to the next level, those doubts will remain, and they absolutely want to prove them wrong. Yeah, with that said, do you think Kurt Warner deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? Uh, I, I do. I do. The weird thing with him is he's one of those players who he didn't have a, a many, many years of dominance, but the years he was good, he was really, really good. You know, taking the Cardinals and the Rams to Super Bowls, winning league MVPs, the stats he put up were video game numbers for his stretch. And I think his time with the Cardinals is what's going to put him over the edge, and that's not really going out on a limb with a hot take or anything. But when he, he had that brief run with the Rams, and then things weren't good in New York for that year, and he came to Arizona, and just when it looked like his career was done, he kind of got rejuvenated and turned into an elite quarterback again. So if the question with him is, well, he didn't do it long enough, and guys like Terrell Davis, he didn't play you know, have a particularly long career either. So it's if the measure is, were you one of the best players at your position of your generation while you played? For me, the answer for Kurt Warner is absolutely he was, and that means he should be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Adam, we're going to talk about all the bowls here next week. There's so many bowls, but there's one significant one, the Fiesta Bowl, right there in your backyard, Ohio State and Clemson. you got to wonder, Ohio State, like we've talked off the air, draws pretty well nationally. I'm not sure about Clemson, but, of course, these two teams have faced each other before. What are people saying about that game early on? It's a few weeks away. And here's my thing about it. New Year's Eve is a time where people go out and party and so forth. they got these games on at 3 o'clock, and 7 o'clock East Coast time. It's earlier on the West Coast, of course, for you guys and also the people out in L.A., but still, you know, they can't compete against the NFL. That's what it's coming down to because the NFL plays New Year's Day. Yeah, it's. I think people are excited about the game being a semifinal match. Of course, we had the national championship, the big game, alabama Clemson last year. But Ohio State's one of those teams that we've seen quite a bit out here in Arizona. They were in the Fiesta Bowl last season even when they beat Notre Dame. So, I think people are excited about this game when you have two versus three. And, of course, Clemson was here. And so, I mean, these are teams that we saw last season out here in the Valley in the respective games that were at University of Phoenix Stadium. But I think, overall, it's a pretty good match that people are excited for just because of the fact that well, Ohio State is Ohio State and who people believe could be the national champion. And Clemson was here, and they're trying to bounce back from their loss last season in the national championship game. So the timing, this is one thing I always joke with people, it's great to be on the West Coast because everything's either on time or it's early. Whereas East Coast people, you know, a game that starts at 6 o'clock my time starting at, I guess, now 8 o'clock your time. But at different things where it's like baseball, especially if a New York team or the Nationals are playing the San Diego Padres, it's a late night for you guys. Whereas if the Diamondbacks are playing in Washington, it's an early night for me. So yeah. definitely being on the West Coast makes it easier to cover sports, to follow sports. But this is a game, I think, We'll see what the crowd looks like because it's tough when you expect people to go to a semifinal game and then if they win, to travel to the championship game because I know personally if I was a fan of either of these teams, I'm saving my money to go to the championship game if I can, which means I'm not going to the semifinal game. But Mm -hmm. I think the teams will draw well because they are pretty big-name programs and it's going to be a fun game. Adam, all the best to you, my friend. Continue success. Thank you for being on the show, and we'll look forward to talking to you again in early 2017. Uh, it sounds good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Adam Green right there talking Cardinals. Uh, Greg Bickabaris right here live on Sports Scene on 1650 AM. Also, TuneIn.com. A lot of the fun stuff coming up up until 1 o'clock right here on 1650 AM at Greg Bick on Twitter. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Greg Bickabaris inviting you to join me for Sports Scene live each Wednesday from noon to 1 right here on News Talk 1650 and TuneIn.com by typing WHKT in the search box. Excellent guests and interaction at Greg Bick on Twitter, all powered by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Sports Scene each Wednesday from noon to 1 right here on News Talk 1650. People in Chesapeake and Hampton Roads have come to expect the finest Italian food at Spaghetti Eddie's. In addition to great lunch and dinner served daily, this fine establishment caters to and can host your party. Call 484-7301 for their Taylor Road location and call 410-5500 for their restaurant in Greenbrier. For more, log on to SpaghettiEddie'sPizzaCafe.com. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email the show 
bcogb at hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bigavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And I want to thank Adam Green for joining us, talking about the Cardinals. Of course, the Cardinals just put a damper into the Redskins season by beating them 31-23. to Now the Redskins, of course, have to go on the road to take on the Eagles. The Cardinals take on a Miami team that got slaughtered by the uh, Ravens last week. Also, for you traveling into the D.C. area, great places to go visit. The Vietnam Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, the Capitol, and the Iwo Jima Memorial. And of course, it is Pearl Harbor Day. Also, my grandmother passed away today, 30 years ago. The late Georgia Vasily Cool. We love her very, very dearly. A local tradition is C.P. Shuckers with locations on Shore Drive and Pacific Avenue. People love their prime rib seafood and much more. They showcase all the bowls. And we're going to do a special bowl show next Wednesday from 11 to 12 and talk about every single bowl. They showcase, of course, NHL, the NBA, including the Wizards too, folks, college football, golf, soccer, tennis, uh, NBA, like we mentioned, of course, all the bowls. Like both locations on Facebook and log on to cpshuckers.com. Get a great meal over there. Eat or be eaten at CP Shuckers with locations on Shore Drive and Pacific Avenue, appetizers, pasta, burgers, seafood. They have it all. Go by and see Chef Leon, Chris, Matt, and Mark as well. Of course, Sports Scene is every Wednesday, 12 to 1 on the radio, 1650 a.m. on TuneIn.com by typing in WHKT, archived on YouTube, and we also promote it, and it's archived on Twitter as well. The number one social media in the world now is Twitter. GJBTV.com, archive shows, click the YouTube link, and if you don't believe me about Twitter, just ask Donald Trump. He's tweeting at 3 o'clock in the morning. Shop on the Marketplace sponsors of GJBTV.com and Hampton Roads online mall.com your place for the holidays save the date each wednesday from 12 to 1 for sports scene hampton roads online mall.com browse shop visit let's welcome a regular right here to sports scene i've been on his programs as well my good friend used to work with his brother as well on wlqm doing high school games let's welcome from wavy fox 43 mr brian parsons how are you buddy Greg, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Uh, by the way, December 7th, today is uh, my brother Tim's birthday. Oh, good, good, good. A special, special day. And, you know, people always ask about birthdays and holidays. I was born on 9-11, but you know what? It's it's now a time to reflect and to also uh, remember all the good stuff as well that people have done for good gestures as well. All right, we're going we're gonna to tease you a little bit, Mr. Old Dominion. Of course, a little bit about basketball before we talk about the, the meat and potatoes of the bowl season. I want to get your thoughts first. First, um, we'll do it with Old Dominion's basketball team. Five and three lost to Rhode Island last night, fifty-one to thirty-nine. What that did to me was it screamed, "Where's Mr. Freeman when we need him? He's already gone." Well, yeah, they uh, they are having uh, serious problems scoring the basketball right now. Yes, defensively, they're one of the best teams I've, I've seen uh, Old Dominion have put on the court in, in, in a while. But they are, have serious issues scoring the ball. Um, I don't know. Jeff Jones almost sounds perplexed as to what the problem is. They're getting good looks sometimes. The ball's just not going in the basket. Um, defensively, I mean, did you see the game against Louisville when Brandon Smith had that steal? And, I mean, they outplayed Louisville. They probably should have won the game, but they couldn't hit their free throws either. I mean, they can't score the basketball from the charity stripe or from the, uh, uh, from, from the field goal range. I don't mm-hmm. know what the problem is there, but defensively they look pretty good. They got VCU on Saturday. And then, um, you know, the bulk of the Conference USA schedule coming up. So I guess we'll see what they're made of once uh, the conference season starts. Yeah, and six in a row at home always helps, too. The women are three and three. They take on VCU as well and HU as well for Karen Barefoot's team, who was supposed to be pretty good. But it's already just shaping up, in my opinion. It's going to be very tough to get that at large bid for Conference USA unless they start winning. But there's still plenty of plenty of time for basketball. The only thing, you know, basketball gets drowned out by football this time of the year in December. It's really hard to pay attention to it. And I even told that to Doug Ripley. I said, by Old Dominion making the ball, which will go into our next segment here with you, it's something that's never happened to Old Dominion. You know, as a proud graduate, it's kind of superseding everything leading up to that because uh, it's something that's never happened. It's special. And I want to give you the honors, Mr. Parsons, the pros, the <laughs> pros of playing in the Bahamas Bowl, the cons of playing. Kind of like what Harry Minium wrote a few uh, days ago. Well, I, mean, I think the obvious pros are they're in a bowl game, for one. Uh, 
the last couple of years they haven't been able to they haven't been been to anything uh, postseason wise. Uh, the the pros of being in the Bahamas is a big plus for the players and the coaches and I guess the people that can afford to get out there on such short notice. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for the school. It's a showcase event. It's going to be the only game going on at at that time on December twenty third. Um, that traditionally this game it's only been around a couple of years, but this bowl game has done very well in the ratings. I mean, you're going to have Steve Levy and Mac Brown calling the game. So you're going to have kind of an A-team there uh, in the broadcast booth. And I do believe they actually will be on location, unlike some of these other games that are being called these days. I think the, 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 pros, the pros are huge. And the exposure that the university is going to get um, is probably going to help recruiting as well. I think the only cons to me are the getting there and the expense of the Joe Average fan who may be able to drive to New Orleans or drive down, or take a short flight down to St. Petersburg, Florida, or the short drive up to Annapolis, Maryland, that probably would have been a better situation for a lot of the fans to attend the game. But it's going to be on ESPN. It's not like you can't watch it. So, yeah, I've known Steve Levy since I interned, as you well know, at WCBS. He was at WABC back in the day, and of course he worked for WFEN. Me and him go back a long, long way. I've worked with him before, and he's even been to, when I was a student at George Mason, he was dating a girl in Maryland at the time, so he's a great guy. He's more of a hockey guy, and kind of interesting to see what his, his take will be on this, but um, he's just getting back. I think back. he did the Bahamas, I think he did the Bahamas Bowl last year, too. Yeah, he's done a lot of college football, but he'll tell you first and foremost that hockey is his number one sport. He's a longtime Sports Center anchor, really, really nice guy as well, too. He'll, I'll give I you think my. He's a, great, he's a great talent, by the way. I think. Yes, I'll give you my pros and cons. First time bowl, it's great. It's funny how people always criticize how many bowls, almost over forty, when you include the national championships. That's a lot of minutia, but and it, it, a lot of the bowls are made for TV. But when you've never been to a bowl before, like like Old Dominion, it's a, it's a brand new experience. Here are the cons. The cons are the fans can't help this. They find out in December. It's hard to get travel arrangements to go to a hotel and airfare during the holiday season, even if there is no bowl, no, even if you're staying in the States. Then you have to get a passport. Good luck getting a passport in December. Then the think about this. You might get stuck in an airport on the East Coast because of weather on the way back. If you've got a lot of money, go for it. But it is an inconvenience. I think it's a perfect made-for-TV event. I think my good friend Paul Odette and his family will be excited because all the Buffalo Wild Wings will be packed watching Old Dominion because most people will be off that day. Yeah, I think the ratings are going to be great for the game. Uh, I mean, you know, if you, if, you, if you kind of go back to the days when Old Dominion was in the FCS and they, you know, two years they went to the playoffs, on a national ratings scale, the highest-rated FCS playoff game doesn't even come close to the lowest-rated bowl game. So when it comes to national exposure, I mean, the FCS playoffs, you've really got to search and try to find when James Madison is playing their next game coming up. It's not like it's readily available. I mean, you've got to kind of dig and find out when and where and how you can watch that. The bowl games are right in front of your face. I mean, they're there. It's on ESPN, the big one, not – it's not on the Ocho. It's on ESPN, the real one, the big one. So mm-hmm. that's uh, I, I think I think the exposure is, is, is just going to be great. It's just going to be cool to see Old Dominion to see their name and logo on you know on ESPN. Well, they were you know remember back during the FCS playoffs a few years ago they made they were on ESPN so they've been on before and their basketball team has I think a couple things too. So you look back at it, Brian. You and I are both in radio and TV. Both is that. You know, their TV schedule this year was horrible, and they can't help it, but this was not good visibility at all. And I think this is going to be something that will put ODU back on the map on TV, uh, Conference USA a little bit as well. You saw where a Conference USA team just beat Ohio State in basketball. So I think it's I think it's a good thing. I think it's really a good thing. I think it's a TV event. Uh, the Old Dominion went 9-3 and three this year, and I think people are going to be seeing this team maybe for the first time in quite some time. Yeah, and uh, I will uh, throw my name in the hat as to somebody that does not have a passport. So, unfortunately, I will not be going, but Bruce Rader and Nathan Epstein will be there for the entire week leading up to the game for, um, you know, complete pregame coverage, all the bowl parties, and uh, we'll have a special on-location edition of the Old Dominion football show from the Bahamas with Bobby Wilder and Bruce Rader. So, you know, we're going to play it up. 
Oh, of course you should. And um, some of the best seafood there. They got some really, really good fish there in the Bahamas. I've been there twice. I've never heard one person from the Bahamas say, gee, Greg, I can't wait to watch a football game, though. But still, <laughs> I, I think it'll be because they're mostly into soccer there and tennis and that type of sport. But, um, I mean, Old Dominion's basketball team has been in the Bahamas before, correct? Yeah, they were just there earlier this year at the, uh, the Battle for Atlantis. That's when they, they beat. Uh, they lost to Louisville and LSU and beat uh, St. John. Yes, of course. Old Dominion went nine and three under Bobby Wilder, and you got to wonder now with this if he gets a win here, will his name start being thrown out like some of the other Conference USA coaches to bigger jobs? I mean, there's going to be a lot of jobs open. Um, my gut feeling is he'll be back, but if he goes, let's say nine and three again next year, he might, uh, you know, be looking to move on. You never know. I, I I think we're a year away from that, and yeah, it's I mean it's it's a it's a pretty simple math. I mean Jeff Brom, the head coach of Western Kentucky, uh the past three years, he won back-to-back Conference USA titles. 45 years old. He was making $800,000 a year in Western Kentucky. He's now the head coach at Purdue making more than $3 million a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a six-year guaranteed contract worth $20 million. If that kind of money is thrown at Bobby Wilder, you just can't – I don't, I don't see how you could turn that down. I really – I don't think anybody would be, would begrudge him for taking an, an offer that he can't refuse, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Talking to Brian Parsons from Wavy TV 10, Fox 43. Him and Nathan were doing some double act last night on TV, looking really, really good. Trey Smith, big recruit, going to the Volunteers for Tennessee, the offensive tackle. I want to give you the honors again as well, Brian. Baker Mayfield, uh, D.D. Westbrook from Oklahoma. Or will it be Lamar Jackson from Louisville, Deshaun Watson from Clemson? That's my pick. Or Jabril Peppers from Michigan? Who will win the Heisman Trophy on Saturday? I'm just, I, I've, I've got to go Watson with Clemson just based yep. on the – I've seen him more than any of the other candidates. Um, you know, just watch you – know, I, watch, I watch a lot of ACC football. So um, he's a player, and uh, I, I, I've, got, I've got to give it to him. But, you know, Clemson, it's kind of a weird deal there with how they – are in the college football playoff. They lost that game to Pitt. They also there was a game where the kicker for NC State had a 30-yard field goal that would have won the game for NC State, and he missed it. Um, and I don't know if that forced overtime or if that, if that gave Clemson the win, but I mean Clemson, they're beatable. So um, it's going to be interesting. Interesting playoff. They have uh, who do they have in the first game? They have um, that, that Ohio State. Yes, Is that right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We just talked to Adam Green, who's out there covering the Cardinals, of course, and that's where the game is going to be at in Arizona as well. So these games on New Year's Eve, we were talking to this to the previous guest. I mean, most people go out and party on New Year's Eve, and both of them are at 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock at night, and that's kind of like – but they can't compete against the NFL, which is on January 1st. Yeah, they kind of ran into that problem last year when the ratings took a big dip because of uh, the when the games were, but I guess you're going to – Run into that cycle every few years or so, you know, depending on what day uh, of the week New Year's uh, New Year's Eve is on. But um, I love the college football playoff. I, I love college football. I think the bowl games are great. I remember last year the games weren't all necessarily all that great. All the games, but I mean, two years ago, every bowl game from the Bahamas Bowl to the you know to the Toilet Bowl, they were all <laughs> awesome, fantastic, crazy good football games. And I think if you take these games for what they are, and some people that like to like to hate on these uh, that there's too many bowl games. Well, you know, okay, it's a pretty simple solution. Don't watch if you don't want to. Nobody's forcing you to. And um, it's just good TV. I think the games are good. The kids are ready to play. It's one more game. College football is a tough sport. I mean, it's tough to win a college football game. So anytime a team has a chance to, to go out to end their season with, with one more win, I mean, I think it's a good reward for the, for, for the players and, and, and the fans. All right, this time of the year, take away Old Dominion's great bowl game coming up. And, of course, uh, are people giving you more feedback about the state championship this weekend, which you know we're hearing a little bit about? Is it the Admirals? Is it Old Dominion basketball, men or women? Is it uh, Wayne Mary? They lost to HU. What are you getting the most uh, crunch for right now? So right now, you know, we're kind of gearing up for Oscar Smith trying to make a, you know, make a run at the state championship in, in, in high school football. Um, kind of the big things right now for us, you know, we, the high school football, Redskins, College basketball, um, Old Dominion, of course, uh, Virginia Tech to an extent, of course, they're going to their bowl game. Mm-hmm. Um, Admirals not uh, as much on the radar these days as they have been. They uh, they do have the new coach Robbie Torek. They won their third game of the year last night, but I mean attendance has been way down for the Norfolk Admirals, and uh, the product on the ice uh, really needs to improve. Uh, I think to get the fans back back into the seat to scope. 
you have to wonder without Joe Gregory there, are they they're pretty much have been in the witness protection program, like you said. And it's really kind of sad what's happened to them in Virginia Tech. They take on Arkansas in the Belk Bowl, a lot more convenient, uh, December 29th at 530 as well. Oh, so that, They're probably going to fill that place up, the Tech Oh, fans. sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yep. Brian, all the best, my friend. And uh, leave us with anything you want to plug as well. Well, you know, obviously we have the Fox 43 Sports Wrap every night at 1045 on Fox 43. And, of course, uh, our regular segments at 620 on Wavy News 10 and at 1125 on Wavy News 10. Uh, the Old Dominion football show still going while Old Dominion is uh, still getting ready for their bowl game. That'll be Friday night at 1045 on Fox 43. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, BPAR73. Um, and also, today is Bruce Raider's 40th anniversary at Wavy TV 10. How about that? Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations to Bruce. And one more thing, Bill D., who's been an assistant with Bobby Wilder at Old Dominion, an assistant at Christopher Newport, head coach, well, in your neck of the woods at Southampton, also Phoebus and Oscar Smith. I would think he'd be an ideal choice to replace Matt Kelchner at Christopher Newport. I think they ought to call Bill D. as soon as the season's over Saturday. You know what? I've never even thought about that. He he actually coached with Kelchner at Christopher he, Newport. Um, he lived in Newport uh, News too. Interesting. I never I never thought about that. Well, I'm bring that up. Get a bring it title up. Title for Oscar Smith. I'd love I'd love to see uh, the quarterback Sean Mitchell who's going to William and Mary. I'd love to see that kid go out with a state title. But I got to tell you, the venue. I'm not so crazy about the venue for a state championship football game. I love the proximity of Hampton University, but I don't I don't know if they have the you know the the space to accommodate everything there. Will do. All right, keep up the good work at Wavy and Fox 43, and we will talk to you soon, my friend. Greg, thank you so much for having me. I look forward to being on again. Always a pleasure. Brian Parsons right there from Channel 10, Fox 43. This is Sports Scene. Stay tuned. We'll be back live on 1650 AM and tunein.com after these messages. Oh, yeah, this is the place where Washington Wizards basketball comes alive on the radio. John Wall, head to the circle, cuts his right, splits the defenders, drives, 360 under the basket, oh, oh, oh. and scores! Follow John Wall, the Wizards, all season long on their journey through the NBA. Catch and shoot for three, it's there! It's there! Check it on Twitter at Dave J Sports or at GC Talks. It is the hashtag radio party right here on your home for Washington Wizards basketball. Listen on 1650 AM, The Answer. Mihogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mihogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mihogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mihogar, there is something for everyone. Now back to Greg Bicavaris and Sports Scene in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studio. All right, welcome back to Sports Scene with Joe Daniel. Greg Bicavaris, glad you're with us live every Wednesday on the radio from 12 to 1 on 1650. Also, tunein.com by typing in WHKT to listen on your phone or your computer. Outback Steakhouse is the place to be during this holiday season. Right there at 1255 Fordham Drive in Kempsville, Virginia Beach. One of the best Outbacks in the East Coast. 523-4832. And of course, uh, they got great appetizers like shrimp and blooming onions, uh, steak, seafood, pasta, great desserts, lunch and dinner. Watch the games on TV and all their great TVs. Newly remodeled of course, and of course, they got the great gift cards, tis the seasoning. Purchase $50 in gift cards, and of course, receive a free $10 bonus card as well from Outback Steakhouse. Mike and the staff, they do it right. Great lunch, dinner, seven days a week at Kempsville in Virginia Beach at 1255 Fordham Drive. And, of course, uh, they got all the great food you want and delicious burgers, too, as well. From the Royal Chocolate, let's welcome Brenda Tusing. How are you, Brenda? I'm great today, Greg. How are you? Happy holidays on this beautiful, beautiful December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. And uh, what's uh, got to be an exciting time of the year for you? It's a really exciting time. Uh, there's so much going on. It gets a little crazy around the edges, I won't lie to you. Um, but the store is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Our fireplace mantle is all decorated for the holidays. You know, we've got the Christmas tree in the window, and just all of the fun colors of the season. Our gift baskets are just especially perfect this time of year. Um, just the, the colors, the feel of the season, the kids so excited for the holidays. A lot of fun. 
yeah, we wanted it to be a little bit cooler, but it's still nice, of course, and it's yeah. hard, hard to believe it's only 18 days away. Uh, TheRoyalChocolate.com, and of course, uh, you're on Twitter and Facebook. Talk about your address there. We are at 164 Central Park Avenue. Uh, we're in the Virginia Beach Town Center, and uh, across the street from Ruth Chris in the Fountain area, down a little more towards Columbus Avenue. I tell you, you make you and Terry make uh, Willy Wonka very, very insecure because you got more chocolate items there than than most places do. I tell you, Willie's an amateur compared yes, to us. Yes, yes, that's for sure. We do make a lot of chocolate in the store, and those are actually at this time of year, every time of year, um, our best selling items. People love to give gifts at holidays that say something about where they're from. Um, it's locally owned, locally made, and we have gift boxes of chocolates that we've made in the store. The gourmet apples are a huge hit. Um, Thirteen different varieties of apples to choose from. Everyone is is just equally as good as the other. It comes down to dark milk or white chocolate, nuts, what kind of toppings you like. But they make great gifts. And, you know, the wonderful thing, I think, about the royal chocolate is everything is beautifully packaged, presented so well. But, you know, it does not have to break the bank. We have pretty items, little gift boxes of things, you know, for five, six, seven dollars. Um, our gift um, packages of chocolates made in the store, sixteen ninety five for a for a box of twelve, and then it comes in a tote with tissue. It's just such a nice presentation. Um, of course, this time of year we're very busy with uh, delivering items locally and shipping all around the country. Uh, so there's a lot going on. We're filling a lot of corporate orders right now. Uh, so people saying thank you to their clients, their staff. Mm-hmm. So a lot, yep, a lot going on. And also we have a really nice seating area with a fireplace that a lot of people don't really know about. And you can sit down there and enjoy chocolate fondue by the fire. Uh, another place for um, sort of a, a, you know, with your staff or client appreciation moment. The phone number is 557-6925, open seven days a week. they got great beverages, too, at the Royal Chocolate. Brenda will join us for some extended time next week. And, of course, all the best to you and the staff there, and we will talk to you again in one week. That sounds great. Thank you, Greg. Have a wonderful day. You, too, Brenda. Thank you. All right, let's now get to what tees me off. What Tees You Off, presented by GJBTV.com. Presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News as well. Paul Odette and the great staff there having the best wings, the best sauces right there at 12150 Jefferson Avenue, right by Patrick Henry Mall. Your place for the bowl season. Watch Old Dominion, all the bowls, all the NFL this weekend, the big Redskins-Eagles game going on. And, of course, gift cards, gift cards, gift cards. You give, you get. Buy $25 in holiday gift cards for use on a future visit. Get a blazing bonus worth up to $100 that you can redeem up until after January 1st. So after January 1st, cash it in for a bonus prize with the blazing bonus. Great win. Great burgers, great salads, great desserts, great appetizers, fried pickles right there with Paul Odette. Buffalo Wild Wings open seven days a week. Wall-to-wall TVs, wings, beer, sports at Buffalo Wild Wings. All right, what tees me off? We'll go right through it. The blurry scenario of iced tea and soda refills. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about this last – or was it last week? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like they're two different drinks, but sometimes the waitress will say, you know what, just take both. Other times, it's two separate drinks. All right, length of college football games. They're too long. One a major TV analyst who played for college football in the NFL said the same thing. Half time is too long. College football was too long compared to the NFL. Seatbelts, they're very important. But I tell you, Joe Daniel, it's nothing worse when you're starting to drive and you're getting tangled or slammed because of the seatbelt trying to unwind it or pick it up. If you're getting tangled by your seatbelt, you're using it wrong. <laughs> Emojis, they are okay, but not. Let's don't go overboard with every expression. Yeah. Even my goddaughter, like in person, gave me a thumbs up. I do the thumbs up all the time. I'm yep. a thumbs upper guy, but yeah, you're right. A lot of the the kids nowadays they uh, they put an emoji behind everything. It's just like they'll say a word and then they'll give the corresponding emoji. They'll say another word, corresponding emoji. It's it's too much. 
Funny how a new word is trending versus was, you know, hybrid a few years ago. Everything now is hybrid. Now it's sriracha. I mean, every type of food has Ooh, got sriracha. Yeah. I mean, really? Come on. Not I ev- love sriracha. And like the bottle says, I put sriracha on my sriracha. I love that stuff. All right. Pool trolls. No big deal to see somebody swimming in the pool during the summer. You just walk by a neighborhood pool. You see somebody swimming. You go to a hotel pool and you have those private doors like oh wow there's a person swimming in there there's a person sitting in the jacuzzi like they don't see that every day during the spring right (laughs) all right customer service at grocery stores really awkward when 10 or more people are in a line trying to get a refund when you have you know several people at the cash register but joe daniel only one person at customer service yeah and they're all upset they're yes. all upset. They all have issues. Oh, especially this time of the year. Yeah. Heisman Trophy. Former greats are on a podium when announcement is done, right? Looking for a possible mention or a, or a bone from the current winner, and the kid has no idea who most of them are. It's really, really awkward. Okay, I finally realized what leaves are in your yard. They're legalized litter. Leaves are illegal. You all got to pick them up or or shred them. But you have a landscaper guy who does that for you, right? I got somebody doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to do it. All right. The Bahamas Bowl, it's great. It's a made-for-TV event, but you need a passport in December. Good luck. I want to thank our guests today. All of them were excellent as well. Uh, Adam Green, Brian Parsons, and Brenda Tusing. Go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows. We'll tweet it at Greg Bick. We'll be back next Wednesday for Sports Scene. One Wednesday from 12 to 1, we'll have the college bowl scene prior to from 11 to 12 on December 14th. For Joe Daniel, I'm Greg Bickabaris. Happy Wednesday. Be safe. We'll talk to you soon. The best of News Talk Radio in Hampton Roads, AM 1650, WHKT Portsmouth. We are the answer.